Hi, boys and girls. Miss Angie here. Today, I'm going to show you an interactive globe. You're familiar with a globe that looks something like this. You may have seen it in the classroom or a library or maybe even at your house. And it marks lots of important things that are found across our Earth, right? But it's just a model. And it only gives us the surface information, maybe like the, the name and the location of a certain um, city or country around the world. But a, an interactive globe like Google Earth will give you even more information and allow you to virtually visit that space on our planet. So on your computer or your smart tablet, you can go to google.com forward slash earth forward slash, or perhaps on your tablet, you may need to install the app. No matter what, we want to make sure you click Launch Earth here, if that's an option. And then you just kind of pause for a moment, look at the universe and allow it to, to open. If it's the first time you go, to, you are opening Google Earth, you will just be given a globe um, to view. It's not my first time. It remembers that the last time I came to Google Earth, I happened to be at the White House. So it remembers that and it comes back there. So let's just get a little tour of Google Earth. Over here on the left, you have several navigation icons. The first one is where you will sign in. If you're not signed in, you might not be able to search. So you want to make sure you sign into Google Earth over here. That's an important step. Then the remaining things in this line, this first one is the search bar, <clears throat> excuse me, or the search field. And you can copy or paste, rather, things into this search field, or you can type right inside. So, for example, you can see I already searched for Savannah, Georgia and Charles Ellis Montessori Academy. So I can even go to my recent searches and just click on them. And the globe will start spinning and bring us to Savannah, Georgia. It will also open a little card of information over here on the right that you can look at and even click more information and read a little bit more about Savannah. The other thing that you'll notice is, let me make this a little smaller, whoops. Yes, you can go and see several different cards and get more information. If you scroll down, there's lots more to learn. So think about that for any spot on the, on the map. But also in this lower right-hand corner, you can see there's a compass rose. You can zoom in and out. There's something called 3D, this is called Street View, and this is called Fly to the Location. And then this globe down here shows us with a little plus sign where we are on the globe. Because see now in our big space on the screen, we're zoomed into Savannah. But over here, there's a globe that will always tell us where we are. Now we're going to get a little bit closer in. So let's come back to our search field. And instead of Savannah, Georgia, we'll go to backspace. We're going to go to Charles Ellis Montessori Academy. And since I've been there before, I can just click here, but you could type it in the box. You can see Google Earth is going to fly in and we can get an aerial view of our school, which is pretty exciting. Now, if we wanted to go visit our school from the street, we could click this little street view man click and drag him to a blue area. And this is any area on the map that um, Google has been with like a three dimension, I mean, a, a 360 degree camera, like a little car with a camera on top. And it's driven all through our community so we can even visit spaces on the globe without actually going there. You can see I'm on a street right near our school. Now, if I click and drag, I can move my little imaginary street man and I can walk right down the street. There we go, I had to get another arrow. Sometimes you have to move around a little bit so you can get the arrow and it gives you the illusion that you're walking or maybe driving right down the street. I can click and drag to the right with my mouse or my trackpad again, and I can see the front of our school. Now, sometimes there are tours inside of buildings that we can even go visit, and we can actually go inside. Our school is not one of them. 
I'm going to use my search menu up here and I'm going to go to the White House because we, it is Inauguration Day, and if you watch this at a different time, it might be the week of the inauguration, but we're going to get a new president. So let's go see where our president is going to live. We just flew right in to the White House. Now, look at the neat thing about this. I'm going to zoom in again with my mouse. Whoops, got off kilter. Let's bring it back over. Come on. I wanted to show you the inside. So if I click my little street view man and drag, can you see the map that's happening? There's like a little pathway that's all inside the White House. So anywhere I drop my little street view man, I can then walk inside the White House and take a little tour. Here I am. So you can go ahead and do that too, as it's part of the bonus that's in your um, assignment today. So you can follow the path and you can take a virtual tour of the White House. And there's lots of other buildings around the world that have this available too, as well as lots of national and international landmarks. So speaking of tours, what else can Google Earth do for you? Look over here on the left-hand side, there's this thing called Voyager. If we click on that, we have all sorts of options of places we can go and take virtual tours that are already built into Google Earth, and it's done by the photographers and people at Google in cooperation with other folks. So you can scroll through and visit another place and get lots and lots of interesting information about it. If you just have a little bit of time, you could click the, oops, let's get back out of Voyager. You could click the I'm feeling lucky, the little dice, and just take a random tour. Let's just go anywhere. Let's do that. We're leaving the White House. We're leaving DC. Where will we go? Oh, goodness. I can't pronounce that. I can't even read that. But it's a very special river and an interesting bridge and a tunnel that looks, seems to go through a mountain. Well, we could click more info and perhaps learn more about that. It's in Greece, we do know that much. Okay, well this particular one doesn't have much information about it, but it is certainly beautiful to look at. Look at that. Okay, and we can see up here, there's, that's three out of six pictures. So we can go and visit lots of places in the world just by clicking the I'm feeling lucky. and enjoy a view of something that we probably will never get the opportunity to visit. Let's click back and back. What else does this do? This button is to add to projects, which we're not expl exploring quite yet. You're welcome to click on it if you want and see what it does. This is the type of map that you're looking at. So let's click here. You can decide if you want your globe to be clean without any borders that show you know, countries or any labels at all. Here is the one I've selected. It's the exploration style that has country borders, labels, places, and roads. I could select everything, or I could customize my own look and feel if I wanted to. Now, if we keep scrolling down in here, I'll get myself out of the way. I have turned on 3D buildings because I like that I can come down to the street and actually see the building. You might like to do that. I have my animated clouds turned off because quite frankly, I'm not studying clouds right now and I don't need them to take up extra bandwidth for me. But then down at the bottom, there's this thing called grid lines and it shows the latitude and longitude, which is super helpful for us as we learn about spaces in our globe. So I'm gonna turn those on. So then you can see where exactly these things are on the globe. And I recommend that you turn that on as well. The next button in our tour of um, Google Earth is a measuring stick. It's got a little ruler and you can start measuring distances here. I encourage you to play around with that in case your teacher has ever asked you, how far is it from Savannah to Washington DC, for example? You could start figuring that out by playing with the ruler. So I encourage you to do that and check out all of those tools. So my friends, your assignment today in its learning um, 
has you looking for specific things on the planet and you will need to follow the directions given there because depending on if you are in upper L or lower L, you have a different assignment. So enjoy this little tour of Google Earth and I think you will find it fascinating that you can visit lots of places that interest you. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to write to me in It's Learning and I will check on you just as soon as I can. Okay, bye-bye.